Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Connie Douglas from Great Stampin' with Connie. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Canada, and I would like to welcome you. Um, this is Thursday evening, and we are here for Connie's Craft Along. So if you are joining me, say hello. Um, I'll just flip this around a little bit till it catches up with me. My apologies for being late. Um, I am at the cottage. You, if you know my if you know my craft studio, you know this is not uh, not the craft studio at my house. This is the cottage background, and the internet's a little bit slow tonight. Actually, it's been slow all week, um, partly because of the rain, perhaps maybe because of the smoke. It's been smoky, and air quality has not been good. Although uh, yesterday I heard that Toronto had the worst air quality in the world. So we haven't been that bad, but um, you can smell the smoke up here. And so I don't know whether that's impacting the way the, the internet waves wave <laughs> or what. But uh, anyway, if you are joining me, say hello and let me know that you are here and you are uh, watching or crafting. And I have a one sheet wonder for tonight. Uh, Melanie had asked if I ever do these and we have done them here before but not for a little while so I thought oh, let's do one again and uh, with the sorry my cat is walking on the craft stuff Oscar get down please yeah he's just looking at me it's not going to work well uh, anyway sorry um, designer series paper is on sale this month only until tomorrow. Tomorrow is the very last day. So if you haven't ordered any yet, um, make sure you get your order in tonight or tomorrow morning before uh, before it's too late because it's 15% off and who doesn't like to save some money. <laughs> now, if you want every pack of designer series paper and some cardstock and a few stamps and some dies and maybe some embellishments because who doesn't want embellishments? <laughs> Hi, Lorna. <laughs> then you should do what Lorna did. <laughs> Actually, now that I see her here, um, get the starter kit. It is it's the best deal for your your craft dollars uh, right now. There is a special on that as well, so you can select two hundred and six dollars worth of product, and you only pay one hundred and thirty five dollars. No tax, no shipping. So it is an awesome deal. Seventy one dollars in free product. And you don't have to pay the tax man for that. And you don't have to pay to ship it to you. So how awesome is that? And then uh, then you could be a member of the great Stampin' Believers team. And that would be awesome too. So so do consider that if you have a long list. <laughs> um, because it is, yes, you're right, Lorna. It is the best deal. It's an awesome deal. And uh, lots and lots of benefits to being part of the Stampin' Up! family. We had a demonstrator event just last week. You may have seen some of my pictures up on social media of some of the cards we made. And uh, they showed us all sorts of little sneak peeks and uh, gave us tips and tricks on how to do things and new creative ideas. Uh, it was all creative. There was no business at this event. It was just a creative event, but uh, lots of fun and lots of learning. So uh, that was a great thing. And then there's, uh, there's our team. And uh, we have a lot of fun in our team as well. So love to have you join us. Alrighty, I am going to flip this down and uh, we can uh, take a look. This is actually, this is the, the sheet of the stuff that you need, but I am going to set it aside for a moment. Other than this designer series paper. And um, I had suggested that you could use one piece of designer series paper or two. And uh, then I went on to explain that if your designer series paper has a direction, this obviously has a direction, this is up, <laughs> this is down, and you know, you don't really want your flowers going sideways. Even the camera's slow to focus tonight, good grief. <laughs> um, so if your paper has a direction, you can cut one piece this way with it actually sideways and one piece with it up and down and then you have can have tons of flexibility with how to um, create your cards portrait or landscape or you know some of each or <laughs> however you want and having said that i actually made some cards and <laughs> i had a piece that i had done sideways so that 
you know, the pattern would go this way on a, a, a landscape card, and I ended up doing a portrait because I like the way it looked. So <laughs> you never know until you get there. But uh, anyway, if you do two pieces, you get need twice as many pieces of your layers and your background stuff. Um, and but you get to make twice as many cards. So it's all good, right? But I did want to take a moment and show you this paper. This is called Inked Botanicals. It is six by six, obviously. And there are a number of this out of the way, a number of different patterns. They don't all have a direction. And certainly on the backs, they don't all have a direction. And I don't think I'll be, well, I don't think I can get them all in the screen at one time, but um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would be more than that. What am I missing? Missing one of these. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stack these up. Just give you a little bit of an idea of what's in this pack of paper. And then there's the, some of the same patterns in the crushed curry. So uh, there's Lost Lagoon and Pool Party. There is uh, crushed curry. I believe they have the same pattern, Calypso Coral, and then there's the multicolor. So this is not all of the pages, I don't think. And I'll just flip some of them over. You can see there's some line little lines on it. Hopefully you can see that. Let's bring it up a little bit closer. So I give you a little better look. Oh, focus is not good tonight. Come on. <laughs> Cover this stuff up so it will focus on it. Yeah, I don't know why it's not focusing better tonight. But anyway, there are little lines in that. And then there's, uh, you know, some little flower things and flowers. And then there's a couple of these. Woohoo! <laughs> Throw me in the flags. I love them. So, oh, Karen. Hello, Karen. I'm glad you found us. There's a couple people that I know are going to try and find us this evening. I haven't seen Kathleen yet, and I haven't seen Elizabeth, but hopefully they will find us. There's another uh, plaid in here as well in a different color. Let's see if I can find it to share somewhere. Um, oh, here we go. It's in the crushed curries. So I don't think that the front of this one is either. So, oh yeah. So there's the front in Lost Lagoon, and then the back is the plaid. That's really bright. I don't know where to put my light to get enough light, but not so much glare because that's a lot of glare, isn't it? Put it up. I don't know whether that's any better. Anyway, uh, so yes, beautiful, beautiful paper. But the really cool thing about this paper is that to make it, the artist took actual flowers and actual leaves and dipped them into paint and used them like a stamp to create these pictures. And then they did photographs of the paintings, which uh, which is kind of common. A lot of the artwork on our designer series paper is actual canvas paintings that the artists have created, and then they uh, photograph them and turn them into our paper. But this one is neat. If you watched my craft spot yesterday, you know that the paper that I used was torn paper, and they created pictures with torn paper, and then they photographed that. This is made by actual, uh, using actual plants and flowers and things dipped in paint to create the canvas. And then they photographed it. And I thought that was just like really cool. <laughs> so onwards with crafting. Uh, you are going to need one or two pieces of designer series paper, six by six. I have already made the cards uh, with the piece of paper that I had on in my photograph. Uh, so I'm going to use these two pieces of paper tonight to craft with. So, 
so those are the pieces that I'm going to use. You will need three or six card bases in colors that coordinate with your uh, designer series paper. Because I'm going to need these. <laughs> you need a whole bunch of layers of cardstock. <laughs> so uh, two pieces of four and a quarter by two, two pieces of two and a quarter by two, and three pieces of two and three quarters by two and one quarter. Okay. Uh, if you are doing two pieces of designer series paper, you will need to double these numbers. So you'll need four of these and four of those and six of those. Okay. And that hopefully is this big stack of cardstock that I've got. I was having to use two pieces. So hopefully I got that right. Um, you need some shapes for sentiments and they can be shapes or strips or, you know, any combination because obviously we're making a number of cards. You may want a few different things. <laughs> Kathleen, you found us. Yay. I'm so glad. Kathleen was on Zoom last night and she said, okay, I have everything cut and prepped. And I'm thinking, uh oh, from what? Because I have nothing cut and prepped. And uh, she had mixed up the nights for what was going on. So she was very ready and then uh, was just hoping that she'd be able to find us on Facebook tonight. So I'm so glad that you did. Uh, and all the usuals stamps, ink, adhesive, embellishments, and you will need a trimmer. Hopefully you saw that on uh, the instructions because the six by six piece of cardstock needs to be cut down into bits and pieces. And um, we will do that together. Um, and then I do have, I had hoped to get it posted to go live right as we were finishing, but I didn't get enough time because I was still finishing the cards. There anyway, I have pictures of uh, some of the cards. And I have a picture of designer series paper with lines to give you the measurements. So you will see that photo on my Facebook page and I will post that uh, right after we finish this. So I just need to grab my trimmer. Get out, get out my instructions again. Make sure I don't mess up on what I tell you to do. Okay. So six by six piece of cardstock. And the first thing we're going to do is cut it at two and a half inches. Okay. And then we are going to take this two and a half inch piece and we're gonna cut it at two and at four. So these pieces are going to be two and a half by two. Actually cut it two and four, not really two and four, because once you cut it, you want to go back to two again. So cut it two inches and two inches. So you have three pieces that are two inches by two and a half inches. Okay. And then, I don't know if I turn this sideways or not. If you are cutting two pieces, you do want to turn one sideways. My piece doesn't really have a direction, so it doesn't matter. But if you're, if you're, paper does have an up and down pattern and you're using two pieces, make sure you turn one 90 degrees. You can cut both of your pieces at the same time in your trimmer. It will cut two pieces of design series paper at once, uh, but just turn one 90 degrees before you start. Okay, so now I have this piece and this is, uh, it's the rest of what makes six. So it's still six inches long and three and a half inches wide. So we are going to turn it 90 degrees and on the six inch side, we're going to cut it at four inches. So we're gonna have a piece that is four inches and a piece that is two inches, okay? And then both of these, we are going to cut in half lengthwise. So that is one and three quarters. Okay, so these are one and three quarters, oops, one and three quarters by four, and there's two of those. And then we're going to cut this one at one and three quarters as well. Okay, and these are uh, one and three quarters by something less. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, let me just do this to be sure. One and three quarters by two. Yes, I thought it was two, but it's like, okay, let's just measure it and make sure. <laughs> so there we go. Okay, hopefully you got that. Um, so I could, uh, I'll just cut, I'll cut one more. Let me just find, let me find what I want to do for the next one. <laughs> this paper is awesome uh, for this type of card. I'm, uh, I'm not shocked, but I was a little, I was sort of pleasantly surprised at uh, how well it works out for uh, a one sheet wonder. What do you think? Mix this with orange or shall we mix it with crushed curry? Hmm. I think with crushed curry, it's kind of like that. nice and bright. Could be this too. But. Okay, so I will cut cut these again. So I am going to turn. Hmm, no, this this one has no direction, so I'll just leave it, and then this I'll just cut up and down. So I'm going to cut both of these because I will need them both. So across the oops, across the top, we're going to cut at two and a half. If I could keep my paper together, it would be ideal. So two and a half, and then we are going to cut this into two inch pieces. So these will be two and a half by two. And we will have, now we're gonna have six of them. So if you're cutting both of your pieces of paper at the same time, you'll have six pieces this size. And I won't, won't actually make these cards tonight because I haven't cut any of the layers for it, but, <laughs> but I'll save them for another time. And then this last piece, three and a half by six, we're going to turn it, well, here, yeah, we're going to turn it 90 degrees and we're going to cut it at four inches. So we have a piece that is four inches tall and we're going to cut that at one and three quarters. These we're going to try one and three quarters. Gosh. Seems to be right where the, the hinge is. One and three quarters. There we go. So we have four pieces that are four inches by one and three quarters. And then these two we're going to cut at one and three quarters as well. So they will be two inches by one and three quarters. Ah. <laughs> quarters. Okay, so hopefully you got that. Uh, and if you didn't, as I say, I will post it on my Facebook page right after this. Um, the other thing you can do if you want to do a little bit of math is these are all standard borders. So uh, whatever this is, you just reduce it by quarter inches, right? Uh, so this is two and a quarter by two, which means there should be a piece of uh, designer service paper that is two inches by one and three quarters that's going to go on. It's just a little harder to know where to cut. <laughs> and you'd have to, you'd probably have to draw that out. But anyway. It will be posted. Okay, so here is all of my designer series paper and all of my layers. And the next thing we, <laughs> we need to do is a whole lot of a whole lot of sticking. Okay, so all of these get layered onto uh, the piece of cardstock. And if you've used different colored cardstock for the background, that's fine. Um, this can be any way you want. You can also mount them upside down uh, and use the back, not upside down really, <laughs> because the paper is two-sided. Um, so these are both crushed curry on the back. So I don't want a ton of crushed curry, but I might do some so that it's not all um, Lost Lagoon. Although I do, do like Lost Lagoon. <laughs> but 
we'll probably mix it up a little bit, starting with the very first one. So, so if you have not checked your email today, I did send an email earlier um, because I have finally been able to book um, our fall retreat. So it is November 17th to 19th, and it will be at the Stainer Christian Camp again, uh, which is in Stainer for anyone that uh, isn't familiar with the camp. It's this wonderful, wonderful facility tucked in the heart of town. And as soon as you go in the driveway, you feel like you've, you know, gone somewhere far away and you're in in the woods camping or you know it's a lodge it's we're not camping don't worry it's november we're not camping <laughs> um but um, it's just it's, it's it is well they call it a hidden gem because it really is and apparently stainer uh developed around the camp the camp has been there for years and years and years and years and uh, uh the town of stainer just sort of built up around it so you come in off this residential street and you drive into the to cottage country kind of thing. So it's wonderful. Um, beautiful big room for crafting. Uh, very, very good lighting. The food is awesome. Almost everything is made from scratch. There are... Uh, rooms in the same building so we don't have to leave the building at all although uh, it's lovely to go out for a walk around the grounds and stuff but um, the crafting the meals and the uh, sleeping accommodations are all in the same place so that is wonderful and um, if you don't want to stay over if you are local you don't have to you can um, Come as a, a day guest basically so I don't have costs yet I don't have anything I said in my email I have no details I don't have the contract the quote from uh, from the camp yet because uh, this all just happened this morning Kyle phoned me to uh, tell me that he was working on the bookings and that he had put me in so um, I had wanted the following weekend but 26th to the 28th, I think, but uh, unfortunately, I was not able to get that, so I took what I could get. <laughs> it's a song, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, because there was a craft sale that I had wanted to participate in on the 17th to 19th weekend, but I would rather go to a whole weekend retreat than a one-day craft sale, so... Uh, so that's what we're doing. Anyway, I will get information out about it, more information about it and costs and all that as soon as I get the quote from the camp. So watch, watch your inbox and uh, that will be coming. But I'm, I'm very excited because I have been waiting and waiting and waiting and I thought, oh my gosh, if I can't get a weekend there, I am really going to have to try find another location to, to do this because uh, I haven't done one since February and I miss them. They're so much fun. I love spending the weekend with a whole bunch of girlfriends crafting and socializing and really doing whatever you want whenever you want. So, so that's uh, some something to look forward to for the fall not that i am trying to rush summer by any stretch don't don't misunderstand me on that <laughs> summer is my jam so i'm uh, i'm not trying to rush through that one but it is nice to have this to look forward to okay how's everyone doing with their uh, they're layering there. Uh, my friend Louise, who's a demonstrator in the UK and uh, works with our group on the uh, global retreats that we do. 
works. Who knew you could make so many friends with a little bit of cutting and pasting? And here we are. First we cut and now we're pasting. Hey, last one. This uh, this is a great way to do your Christmas cards as well. If uh, you know you want to make a whole bunch of Christmas cards, you do it like an assembly line kind of thing, and you just you know you do all your cutting, you do all your sticking, you do all your stamping, you can, and then you just get all your card bases and uh, you're ready to roll. So what do I have for card bases? I didn't. Uh, So one, two, three, four, five, six, I have three Calypso Coral and three Crushed Curry. And um, I didn't put this in the instructions because it's completely optional, but you can, of course, step these up as much as you want. So we've done one layer and I will just show you the ones that I had made uh, with the other paper. So, um, we're just going to basically what we're going to do now is we're just going to take, uh, you know, a couple of these and we're going to decide what we want with what, you know, oh, let's put those two together and we'll make a card and let's put, uh, you know, three of these together or whatever. I'm just sort of throwing them together right now. We'll sort that out in a moment. But uh, anyway, you just sort of lay them out and decide what you're, you're going to do. And then, uh, and then you just, you know, stick them down and add a sentiment. So this one, uh, I had put three pieces on and um, and then just a strip for a sentiment. And then this is the one that I had mentioned earlier where I had the long piece that could have done a nice landscape card, but I put it down on the portrait layout and I really liked how the strip was the exact size of the card base. So I thought, oh, I kind of like how that comes together. So I ended up doing it portrait instead of landscape. But here is one that is landscape um, with the paper turned sideways. So this is where I had turned my paper. So, and this is front and back, but uh, I had turned the paper sideways so that I had, <laughs> I still had my flowers going up and down. <laughs> and, uh, but then I made some and I've added an extra layer. So here we have the Calypso Coral card base, but I have added a pool party layer and I have embossed it. So let's bring that up a little bit closer. Oops. Hopefully it will focus. And you can see, hopefully you can see that it is embossed. This is the exposed brick embossing folder. It's uh, one of the new ones in the annual catalog and I just got it recently but I really like it. It's uh, it's a little different because it's got some brick but it's got worn brick areas as well and so it's uh, a little bit different than anything we've ever had but it's also subtle. It just adds some texture. It doesn't add a whole lot of pattern in the back. So, so there's cards that I've done where I've included an extra layer. So that's always an option as well. And you could add a further layer under your sentiment if you wish, or uh, however you want to do it. So there's lots of flexibility with this. Now I did not, um, I did not prep layers for this, and I didn't tell you to prep layers. So you would have to go back and do that. I have two in Pool Party and one in Calypso Coral that I had made for those other cards and didn't use. I don't know, I think I could put, yes, this could work with Pool Party. So, so perhaps I will use these, we'll see as we go. And uh, then it's just a case of, um, you know, laying things out and deciding what you want. I would, strongly suggest that as you put them together, you pop up 
some of your pieces. Um, I have used dimensionals only on the uh, sentiments in the cards that I just shared, but you can use dimensionals on some of these pieces if you wish, or your sentiment or both, or you don't have to use them anywhere. They just, uh, again, they add a different level of texture to your cards. And uh, I don't know about you, but I think it looks good. <laughs> so, so I do like dimensionals. And then at the end, of course, you must add gems because because <laughs> you have to have gems. <laughs> it's not a real card until you add the gems. Not quite cooperating. I think I'm just going to pin him a little bit because I can see that it is not quite even and it will drive me around the bend because I'm not getting it quite right. There we go. So our card base is just going to be an itty bit smaller, which no one will ever notice. So, and now the edges are perfect. Let's see if this one's uncooperative in the opposite way. It's funny because sometimes you have one card base that just doesn't quite fold right. And it's like, well, how come the other half fold is fine? Uh, so just how the just how the paper folds sometimes it seems. Okay, so there's my card bases. And uh, now we're ready to just start start creating deciding what we're going to do. And then um, I have cut out a bunch of shapes and I couldn't find some of them, so I cut off a bunch more. So I have, I have a number of shapes. Uh, you quite likely have basic white because most of the uh, designer series paper has a, a white, basic white background. But this paper happens to have a very vanilla background. So all of my pieces are very vanilla. And I was thinking that I would use this stamp set tonight. It's called Very Best Occasions. It is in the uh, annual catalog and it's not new. It was in there last year, but I didn't have it. I only got it recently um, because, <laughs> because I was looking for things for my Christmas in July card class. And it's like, hmm, here's one and I can use it for other things. And I do have another uh, sentiment set for Christmas that I will use in July. But uh, anyway, I decided I was going to get it because I liked these. I'm pretty sure this one was in there last year. Now I have to look. There was a couple of uh, couple of stamp sets that I sort of found recently, and uh, and I hadn't I, they hadn't you know twigged with me before. You ever find that you look at something and it's not appealing, and then you look at it later and it's like, oh, I really like that. Yes, very best occasions does not have the little uh, pink N beside it to indicate that it is new, so it was in fact available last year but I didn't have it last year. So now I have it. There we go. So we have, uh, let's see, love you. Thinking of you and happy birthday, those are good. You make my life happier. I love that one. Uh, and then sending you smiles for every moment of your special day. That's good for anything, right? So there's lots of wonderful, uh, endlessly grateful. That's, uh, that's wonderful. To. What shall we use? Thinking of you is uh, is a good one. We'll use that guy. And uh, how about happy birthday? We can always use happy birthday, can't we? These are smaller than the sentiments I used on the last cards, but that's okay. How about this sending your smiles one? Sending you smiles for every moment of your special day. I don't know whether I have any. Uh, any sentiment pieces that will uh, fit that that will fit on, but 
Let's see if we can get these mounted straight because I didn't mount these before either. We'll give it a shot. Hopefully they're straight. But as I said, they have lots of uh, lots of shapes for sentiments. So if I mess up, we can just do some more. Okay, I am going to use again use Lost Lagoon probably for most of my sentiments, just because then I can just uh, you know keep it all sort of rolling. But again, you don't have to do these all in the same colors. You can use different uh, cardstock layer colors. And uh, that could have been a little further the other way, but doing a hope to give it over a little bit more. Um, yeah, you can use different cardstock colors. You can use different ink colors. Whatever you whatever you wish. Oh, maybe we'll do some happy birthdays, always a good one. And actually thinking of you is always a good one as well. So. Oopsie, that's not a good, <laughs> a good stamping though. So now I should look at what it is. It is tilted up a little bit. Which is odd because here it looks like it's tilted down. But we'll give it another try, and if it doesn't work, we'll abandon ship. We may be abandoning ship on that one. I'm not sure. I need a piece of scrap paper. <laughs> Just so here's a here's a little little trick for you. When you um, if your stamp isn't coming out straight, you're trying to figure out how to fix it. If you line your block up at the bottom of your paper so it is straight and then you stamp then you can see that your stamp is actually mounted nice and straight and you were just messing up on your stamping but if it's crooked it you will even see it when you have it right at the edge of your paper you can often see that you've mounted your stamp uh too much you know it's high on the left or it's low on the left or whatever so it was just me uh, not holding the block straight. So let's see if we can try this once more and get it straight. Much better. Look at that. <laughs> it's funny how it works when you uh, you just sort of thrust your block, right? Yes. Yes. I was looking at the the stamp and my sticker may not be mounted quite right so trust your block is the the message there i think happy birthday this one might be perfect because again i was looking at the <laughs> the sentiment not the block but it's okay Okay, and we will do some thinking of you. I'll just make this switch here. Okay, now do I have this? I don't think so. It, again, the sticker looks like it's very crooked. I'm going to try doing this with the block straight. And look, it stamps straight. Trust your block. <laughs> I don't know what shirts I'm going to wear, so I'm just stamping, stamping lots. But I do have those others that I can use as well. So they'll get used somewhere. 
Okay. I think we're good. Sometimes you find, though, as you're putting them together, you put, you know, you put a couple pieces down and you think, oh, I want a bigger, a bigger sentiment piece. And so you have to go back. Or originally I hadn't planned to do those strip sentiments, but I just thought it looked like it needed that. So. Yeah, so then you just, uh, you know, you just sort of lay them out however you like, and you can decide which sentiments you're putting on which cards, how you're going to put them all together. So there is no right or wrong, obviously. <laughs> Maybe I'll just put that guy right in there. And uh, the only thing I would suggest, as is usual, if you do use embossed pieces, um, use liquid glue to adhere it just so it gets into all the little um, crevices and holds well. But if it's just flat hard stock, your tape runner will, of course, be fine. And you don't have to do um, just two, you can do just one. Uh, you could do one piece of uh, the designer series paper with very big sentiment or something. Uh, you can do two, you can do three. It's it's all very flexible and it gets fun as you sort of sit there with all your bits and pieces in front of you to sort of lay it all out and go, okay, what shall I do for this one? And what shall I do for that one? Let me grab my trash bin here a little bit closer for all of these dimensional backs. Sort of going center top to bottom, but over to the right. Okay, and I'll do a couple. I don't know that I will do all of these because uh, <laughs> it's probably a little more than you want to sit and watch me play with. But I don't want that on the orange or orange brush paper. Or maybe, oh, maybe this one should have a layer. And uh, I think I like that. So that's how the uh, embossed layer, and it doesn't have to be embossed, it could just be a cardstock layer, um, or you could emboss it. Again, it's all how, how stepped up you want to make these cards. But the you know, just start with the uh, designer series paper and go from there. So I did mention that I will post the photo of some of the cards and the cutting dimensions for this. And I would love to encourage you to post pictures of your one sheet wonder if you have crafted along tonight. Um, there were a few pictures last week I don't know whether you saw them or not, but uh, there was some awesome cards made last week and shared. So that was fantastic. I love that. And I would love to see them again this week. And then the other thing I will ask of you is, um, do you like these one sheet wonders? I have, um, there are endless cutting templates for for these. I pulled out a few and then I, you know, it almost uh, just threw a dart and said, well, just pick one because they're all, they all work and they're all lovely, but they're all a little different. And so your cards end up being a little bit different. So we could do another one. Um, so two things I would like to know, would you like to do another one? Uh, and would you like to do it next week or would you like to do it, you know, in a few weeks? Let's do some different stuff next week. We did fancy folds for a few weeks in a row. So we can do one sheet wonders for a few weeks in a row. The one sheet wonders do require a little more prep because you need more layers because you are making more cards than if uh, you just cut for a single card with the other ones that I show you. 
to them. But it's up to you. I have, um, as I say, I have a number of templates that I've used to cut six by six one sheet wonders. And I also have templates to cut 12 by 12. And I have templates to cut what is uh, referred to as a double wonder. And a double wonder uses uh, 12 by 12 designer series paper, but only half a sheet. So it's 12 by six, and then you use two sheets. Um, so you have two sheets of 12 by six, and then you use fronts and backs. So you do kind of need to find four, uh, well, two sheets, fronts and backs, where you like all four pieces and all four pieces coordinate. <laughs> Hope you got all that. Uh, my thought is that Countryside Inn would be ideal for that because it's all blues. And all of those pieces, I think, will coordinate beautifully together so that, um, you know, it would be quite easy to do a double wonder with it. Um, but I'd be more than happy to share that on one of these evenings. So uh, I do invite you and encourage you to please leave me a comment in the uh, uh where I post the, the photos and the template and let me know if you like doing one sheet wonders, if you'd like to do one again soon, or if you, you know, would like to do them again, but it, let's take a break uh, and do it in a little bit or whether one sheet wonders are not so much your thing. And if there's something else you would like to do, uh, let me know because if I can, if I can put it together, <laughs> we will do it. Um, as I say, this was a request. Melanie had said, had asked if I do one sheet wonders. And so uh, I said, yes, I do. We'll do one next week. And here we are. <laughs> so I always, oh, always want to be sharing things that, uh, that you're interested in and you would like to see. So feel free to let me know what that is. There we go. So there is three of the cards, um, one with the, the added background. Oh, maybe I should have done one. Uh, should I do one? I'll do one that is portrait, houses, you know, landscape, just, uh, just to add something different here. Do to do to do. What do we want to do to do to do? <laughs> this could almost be a little bit bigger, even, couldn't it? I don't think I have any larger circles. I think that's the biggest circle I did. Yes. So this is where sometimes you might want to go back and, uh, you know, cut a different shape or something for your sentiments. But uh, you know, we'll just, we'll use what we have here. Let's make sure I get this right side up. Channels. And then we just need to find some gems because I can't leave these cards without any embellishments. <laughs> that would just be very wrong.
There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to scooch all of this stuff off the edge for now, and we will find some embellishments for these guys. What do we think? We have gold, uh, gold sequins. That would certainly work. Uh, there is a blue on here that is uh, supposed to be balmy blue, but it reflects very purple uh, sometimes. Actually, there it looks blue and it looks like it would coordinate beautifully. I don't know. I don't know how they do that. <laughs> how do they do that? Why are some of these blue and some are purple? Or is this what, like that yellow dress and blue dress thing? I saw one of those again the other day. Uh, somebody had posted, what was it? I think it was uh, it was a demonstrator and they posted something uh, Stampin' Up! related and said, you know, what color is this? And some people said it was pool party and some people said it was uh, petal pink. So pool party is blue and petal pink is, it's an orangey pink, but it's, you know, it's definitely not blue. And it's like, wow, how does that happen? We have these, maybe, uh, maybe some of these. These are iridescent pearls, and these also reflect uh, different colors, but they too are lovely. So let's uh, have a pack of these that is almost done. Yes, look, let's, uh, let's use these up. <laughs> Put these all in there. Sometimes? Maybe? Just to be different? Oh, and some of this one. Look, look ta -da, finished one. <laughs> okay, there we go. So there's uh, four of the cards. There are still more to be made, but uh, I'll give you an idea of what it's all about and how to do it and hopefully you have been crafting along and you have some beautiful cards that you've got um, ready to go Oop, oh my gosh <laughs> my life is very crooked <laughs> some days okay uh, there we go look i'm back so uh that is tonight's one sheet wonder and as i said i will put up the template to cut that in just a, a couple of moments and uh, would love to have you share pictures of some of the cards that you've made and also let me know if you like these one sheet wonders and whether you want to do one again and if so you know do you want to do another one next week or do you want to take a little break or do you want to just skip the one sheet wonders <laughs> and uh, do something different always open to your suggestions so let me know what uh, what kind of crafting you like to do all right, everyone, thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. I truly appreciate it. And I hope to craft with you all again really soon. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.